with some of the broadest elements. This is the latest piece, um, the chapbook. Um, it's sort of uh, a supernatural, you can tell I'm nervous, a supernatural um, um, love uh, story. Very suspenseful. Yeah, yeah, thank you. It's excellent. Thank you. Um, I'm not primarily a poet, but uh, in the interest of brevity, uh, I want to uh, read you a few poems and a uh, flash fiction piece. Let me take a breath here. <laughs> mm. Mm. All right, here we go. I put this one together um, for this occasion, uh, this being a Saturday. And Saturdays are a special day. So uh, this is called Saturday. <clears throat> Let paisley clouds billow through body and soul until the steel girders of self and world soften and the edifice slumps with a sigh. Sweet Saturday, without obligation or demand, a simple forgetting of the man. Thank you. <laughs> life is a unique thing. Um, we tend to uh, dig deeply into ourselves and um, try to find what's there and accept it as it is, uh, or at least this is what, what I try to do. Uh, so it involves coming across a lot of uh, ugliness and uh, things. Um, and this is a particular kind of life which is unique. Uh, so I've put together this. And, uh, and the thing about it is, once you find that, you say, hey y'all, look what I found. <laughs> so this is called The Writer's Life. Another short poem. Yeah, Brad, this is excellent. Scribble your spleen from left to right. Proselytize your parenthetical pancreas with a flourish of first-person flesh and a pastiche of present tense bones stacked neatly between the margins of blood and bile-soaked pages <coughs> to make a coffin and a gravestone for yourself. of uh, truth-telling, uh, in the interest of pursuing what is difficult in your, uh, in your person uh, as a literary endeavor, um, I come from a long line of alcoholics, and I sometimes drink, uh, but rarely, and when I do, or when I don't, I deal with uh, the imminent threat of alcoholism. And uh, so I wrote this next piece, uh, another short piece to sort of encapsulate that uh, difficulty. <clears throat> Advice from Four Roses. Lay down by your kin on the spinning bed. Wallow in weakness and forget fantasies. Submit, and suffering will be but a dream before the collapse into nothing. Drink deeply, my friend. Swish the spirit between rotting teeth and feel the burn of 101 proof forget you. Um, a flash piece, uh, like James's, but mine is very short. Um, <coughs> it 
it's just straight fiction with with a twist. Um, it's called Gray, uh, and I forgot forgotten to mention that some of these pieces have been published in uh, James's anthologies or uh, or will be uh, in the upcoming one, Memento Mori. Uh, this is Gray, and it was in one of his early. Uh, it might be. One, it was one of the earlier things I think I had published with uh, James. Um, but anyway, right. It was in uh, Serial Killers. It gives a context uh, to the story. So it's, uh, uh, it was in the Serial Killers anthology. Daddy. A halo of excitement glows around the little girl's bruised face. That's him. That's the one. Daddy turns wide eyes to her. He did this to you? His heart burns and glows like molten copper in a crucible. His ashen face flushes blood red. Daddy slows the car to a crawl on the deserted side street. The little girl pivots her head to follow the man walking along on the sidewalk. Her little hand taps the vinyl seat. That's him, Daddy. Daddy pulls the car near the curb. Wheels trudge through the gray slush and sludge. The brakes squeal and the car stops. Are you sure, baby? He looks, she looks at her father and nods. Wait here. Don't look. He steps into the slush, which sloshes away from his black sneaker. He steps onto the sidewalk, taps it with the aluminum bat, and walks toward the stubbly-faced man. The man stops. Wide eyes look into squinting eyes. Sick. The bat swings down, blood splatters and splashes into snow and slush. Ping, ping, thump. Ping, ping, thump. The body lays in the gray slush. The car door opens. Daddy steps in and sits on the black seat. Daddy sits and breathes heavily. Let's go, Daddy. Her small hand presses his shoulder gently. Start the car. Hmm? Let's go home. She looks gently into his scared eyes. The snow melts, but the air is cold and the sun is distant. Daddy's heart aches and he yearns to see her again. He waits for his little girl to point to some man and say, he's the one. Yeah, I just have two more little poems here, unless y'all are done with me. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, another one's just a slice of um, a slice of truth. Um, as you can see, I don't necessarily just write horror. I write <coughs> what may be uh, whatever, whatever is there. Um, I'm primarily a surrealist, and uh, I quite often end up being a horror. Uh, this is 3.43 p.m. 16 December 2013. A long shadow stretches across a snowman stump. My mind unravels the grimy strands of work, and I wait in my truck for my child to run to me. Young woman I glimpse and dream as curls bounce black, and porn flash eyelashes bat. Her chance will meet and frolic in the sunshine of this day. Our eyes lock, and I feel pathetic and ashamed, a leering, balding husband, father, and man. In the last piece, um, I, I've sent this to James for his uh, Memento Mori. Uh, and I think he uh, may be interested in publishing. Um, and Memento Mori just basically uh, means remember your dad. Uh, let's, let's keep a consciousness of our mortality. Um, this is called Psychic Surgery on the Living Room. Confined and confounded, between the corners of this stale room, I push my fingertips through the layers of off-white and eggshell and tan to puncture the paper and penetrate the plaster and tear out a chunk of the barrier between here and gone, 
darkness creeps through the void to bind my vigor, blur my vision, blunt the edge of reason, and the TV laughing falsely beckons me to float in the easy chair on the sea of hopes and dreams of youth now faded, and I, feeling the shame of life wasted in wantonness and fear, summon the, summon the strength to smash that blithering bastard, and I, cross the ruined room toward the door, throw it open, and stand on the threshold of possibility. Thank you very much. And that's why Polar Creek belongs in horror. Right? It's, it's there in my anthologies. Yeah. Okay, so. <coughs>